Hey, how's it going? Well, thanks for joining me. I'm concluding the Porter 040 build series with this video. I may follow it up with some footage out running on our club layout, but for now, at least this is the end of the build series. It's just about completely done. It's ready to go now, but I've got to figure out what I want to do for some lettering and numbering and maybe add a little uh, cosmetic feature like a little bell or something like that. But for now, it's ready to roll and let's take a look. Well, she sort of dressed up for the dance here with a couple of flags. But anyway, this is the smoke box area here. Um, this is where I can plug and unplug the light and our oak front bumper here. This is the coupler on the front. I probably won't be pushing a lot, mostly pulling from behind. I've got the little valve boxes on the top here. This is the piston system and the connecting rod here. This behind the smoke box would be where the main boiler is running through and this is a water tank. These little engines were used maybe in industry or mining and they didn't carry a tender behind them so it was common for them to store extra water for the boiler right on top here. This is the sand dome and the tube here would allow the sand to run down and get between the wheels and the rails. This is the smokestack obviously. Um, a little water feed from the tank. Here's a little uh, tray that I made for the oil can. Something new for me, I'm going to have to remember to lubricate this moving mechanism which I didn't have to do before so this will kind of remind me that that's got to be done. And Let's see, so this is uh, kind of a hunter green. This is black. I'll show you some of the materials that I used to finish it off. This is oak, um, mostly birch plywood for the Baltic birch plywood for what I use to build many of the components. I'm not really a metal worker, so I'm sort of stuck doing that. This lamp I found off the shelf at Home Depot and tricked it up and it's got a couple of motorcycle lights on the inside. So here's the inside of the cab. This is the control bar here. I've got speed, I've got an auxiliary horn, light switch. This will move into position whatever's comfortable. Here's the Johnson bar forward and reverse. Got a toggle switch hooked up here and that just basically tells the speed controller what to do our little water glass, our sight glass here, steam pressure, so to speak. Remember, this isn't electric. Here's our steam dome. Got two safeties up here and a system here that provides air pressure for the horn. And this is the pull to engage the horn up here. Voltmeter, speedometer, and firebox in here. And remember, everything above this height has to be quickly removable with little knobs and things like that without tools so that it will fit in my truck. And then the top, I put more of a matte finish on it so the sun doesn't reflect off that and get in your eyes too bad. This stalk has a union here that will unscrew and this, even though the wiring comes up through here, I can set this down inside the box to put it inside the truck. And here it is from the left. Here you can see the train whistle that I made. This is actually out of PVC. And a few videos back, there's an explanation about how to make one of these. It's pretty simple, actually. Here's a little toolbox so that um, if I have to make an adjustment out on the layout, I've got a place to store a couple tools. And... I think that does it. Well, here's a look at some of the chemicals that I used to finish some of the surfaces on the locomotive. This is a dye stain water based that I used on the oak and that helped to blend together some of the different tones in the oak. I've used this before on my other projects, the flat car and the gondola and my other locomotive. This 
2-in-1 filler and sandable primer. This is great if you're spraying wood and you want wood to have more of a metallic look and, and minimize the grain and the imperfections of the surface of the wood. This stuff works really great. You sand it out almost like an automotive type finish. Uh, I did have some automotive primer that I used for the metal. This I've used a lot. This is a Rust-Oleum gloss black. Works great for me. The water tank, I did this uh, hunter green for the metal parts. Again, when you see this on the shelf, it, it doesn't look like what you want. It says mirrored gold, and this cap doesn't really describe what the finish looks like. I wanted something that looks more like brass, and I had to experiment with a couple of different paints, but this turned out really good for the brass-like products. And then I'm used to using for outdoor woodworking a spar varnish, Helmsman, it's got UV protection in it, and it goes on with a brush uh, from the can, and it ten tends to be kind of thick, and you should really only do horizontal surfaces at a time. You shouldn't try to do a vertical surface because it will run when you, when you get it on there. But for this project, I needed to get it ready for next week, and I'm going to go back and probably add more coats later, but for now, I put a couple of coats of this spray spar urethane, very light, and that would allow me to do multiple surfaces, horizontal and vertical, without a lot of running. So it's not a super thick finish right now. I have only have two or three coats of this, but I'm pretty happy with the way that worked out. One other thing is I've got a couple of galvanized metal sheets, one for the tank and one for the smoke box, and I used this product uh, for metal cleaning and etching to prepare those surfaces for paint. Now this is sort of different for me. I've got a connecting rod piston here. This goes back and forth and this goes around here with this counterweight. I've yet to really run this more than just testing it on the bench. So I'm anxious to see how it holds up out on the layout and I fully expect that maybe something will come flying off here and I'll have to kind of re-engineer this. But for now, just with some off-the-shelf parts, I've kind of rigged up this drive mechanism and so we'll see how it holds up over time. Well, I am super happy with the way it turned out. Better than I expected, actually. I had an idea and did some scribbles on a paper and looked at some pictures and it really turned out better than I expected it to, so I am really happy. And now I want to get it out on the layout and do a shakedown cruise this week and see what breaks and what doesn't break. This body started out as a speeder. You can see here's a picture of the speeder front. And then it morphed into like a little Alco diesel and then finally here to this little Porter 040. The speeder and the Alco are now hanging out in my train room. Well, thanks for sticking with me on this series. I hope it was worth the time that you spent if you watched all the videos. And I'll try to get some shots of this little engine out on the layout this week. See you next time.